Hey guys, welcome to an academy. So this is our YouTube channel. Let's crack CBSC Commerce. I'm Reeti Spandana. I have uh, nine years plus teaching experience, and I'm a faculty in Hyderabad. Okay, so a quick introduction about what is it that you're going to get on our Unacademy platform. So on our Unacademy platform, you're going to have daily live classes. So ye daily live classes up quick real time classroom ka experience. Denge. So basically you'll be attending all these classes and you will have uh, interaction with the educator. And also you can get all of your doubts clarified without any problem through the session itself. The live tests and quizzes basically help us uh, help you in identifying what are your strong areas and what are your weak areas. Structured courses are going to be absolutely pertinent to your CBSC syllabus or unlimited access ke through. Agar aap koi live session miss bhi karte ho, to you don't have to worry, you can attend a recorded session of the same. And if you have any doubts, uh, every four to five classes we will have a doubt session or us doubt session mein aap aapke doubts clarify kar sakte ho. Uh, hello Chetan, welcome to the class. So we also have uh, free live classes which we also call the special classes on our Unacademy app. So please download the app and try and attend as many special classes as possible. So every Sunday we have special class festival. Uh, yani us din jo hai bohat sare sessions alag alag topics mein aur marathon sessions bhi hote hain. So aap Sunday ke din uh, ek baar attend karke dekh sakte ho and then you can take a subscription later. All you have to do is go into your Google App Store or Apple App Store and download the Unacademy Learning app. In the description below this video, you will find a Telegram link. You will also find a link from where you can download our app and also you will find my Unacademy Educator profile. So this is the uh, subscription cost of fee uh, so 11th or 12th ka is saal se hum dual subscription de rahe i'll tell you what is the biggest advantage that you have here uh, 12th ke baad jitne bhi entrance examinations aap likh rahe ho usme pure 11th ke bhi syllabus aur 12th ke dono ke syllabus included hota hai so after your 12th there are many exams where you need to also brush up and prepare for your 11th syllabus to is particular subscription through dual subscription के थ्रू 11th और 12th सब का नोट्स इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन आंसर्स सेशन सब कुछ आपको एक प्लेटफॉर्म पे एक जगह पे रेडी मिलेगा ताकि आप जब चाहे तब उसको रेफर कर सकते हो और दोबारा सेशंस अटेंड कर सकते हो सुन सकते हो और डाउट सेशन में आपके डाउट्स क्लैरिफाई कर सकते हो सो दिस इज अ ग्रेट अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर एवरीबॉडी एंड इफ यू ओनली वांट 12th स्टैंडर्ड सब्सक्रिप्शन देन यू कैन टेक द 12 month subscription also so if you are taking the dual subscription the cost is 25,000 but if you use my code RITI aapko 10% off milega aur aapka fee ho jayega sirf aur sirf 22,500 and if you are taking one year subscription for the 12th standard to aapka fee hai 15,000 but if you use my code RITI RITI you can avail a 10% discount and the fee is only 13,500 rupees so please do not delay enroll today so today the lesson that we are discussing is Eveline so this is again a story uh, which is in your 12th standard syllabus
Okay. James Joyce is a major literary figure of the first quarter of the 20th century. He is known for his bold experiments and narrative techniques in fiction and Ulysses is his most famous work. Eveline is one of the 15 stories of Dublin uh, life that the Dubliners first published in 1914. Okay. Uh, it is a sympathetic portrayal of Eveline. So what is it? It's a sympathetic portrayal. Sympathetic means uh, somebody who relates or feels sad for the other person. Okay. So sympathetic portrayal of Eveline who has within her reach escaped from the drudgery of her life but cannot gather enough courage to seize it. Meaning, usko apne uh, life se bahar nikalne ki opportunity milie par wo us opportunity ko le nahi pa rahi hai. Uh, it's a story about that woman. Okay. She sat at the window watching the evening invade the uh, avenue. Her head was leaned against the window curtains and in, nost in her nostrils was the odour of dusty criton. She was tired. Few people passed, meaning not many people passed. The man out of the last house passed on his way home. She heard his footsteps clacking along the concrete pavement and afterwards crunching on the cinder. Cinder is coal. Or in this case, it can also mean tar. Because that's also made of carbon. Path before the new red houses. One time there used to be a field there in which they used to play every evening with other people's children. Then a man from a Belfast bought the field and built houses in it. Not like their little brown houses but bright brick houses with shining roofs. यानी वहाँ पे दो प्रकार के घर थे एक इन लोगों के घर थे जो बहुत कच्चे हाउसेस थे और छोटे हाउसेस थे नो श्रीधर राठी दिस इज नॉट डिलीटेड ओके देन द चिल्ड्रन ऑफ द एवेन्यू यूज टू प्ले टुगेदर इन दैट फील्ड द डिवाइन्स uh, the waters, the dance, little Kog, Kyog, the cripple, she and her brothers and sisters. Ernest, however, never played. He was too grown up. Her father used to often, uh, used often to hunt them in and out of the field with his black thorn stick. But usually, little Kyog used to keep. So this is how it was. She was sitting here near the window and observing people outside. So this was Eveline. Nix and call out when he saw her father coming. Still, they seemed to have been rather happy then. Her father was not so bad then. And besides, her mother was alive. That was a long time ago. She and her brothers and sisters were all grown up. Her mother was dead. Tizzy Dunn was dead too. And the waters had gone back to England. Everything changes. Now she was going to go away like others to leave her home. Okay. Home. She looked around the room. Reviewing all its familiar objects which she had dusted once a week for so many years, wondering where on earth all the dust came from. Perhaps she would never see again those familiar objects from which she had never dreamed of being divided. So what is this talking about? This is talking about some opportunity that Eveline had, uh, which will mean that she needs to leave the house and go somewhere else. तो अभी उसको घर में चीजों को देखकर नॉस्टैल्जी आ रहा है उसको भी लग रहा है दैट शी नीड्स टू पार्ट अवे फ्रॉम ऑल ऑफ दिस एंड येट ड्यूरिंग ऑल दोज इयर्स 
she had never found out the name of the priest whose yellowing photograph hung on the wall above the broken harmonium beside the colored print of the promises made to blessed margaret mary alcock she he had been a school friend of her father whenever he showed the photograph to a visitor her father used to pass it with a casual word he is in melbourne now she had consented to go away to leave her home was that why she tried to weigh each side of the question so she always was confused whether she should leave the house or not in her home anyway she had shelter and food she had those whom she had known all her life about her of course she had to work hard both in the house and at business what would they say of her in the stores when they found found out that she had run away with a fellow say she was a fool perhaps and her place would be filled by advertisement miss gavan would be glad she had always had an edge on her especially whenever there were people listening Miss Hill, don't you see these ladies are waiting? Look lively, Miss Hill, please. So these were the things that people would usually tell her. Okay, she would not cry many tears at leaving the stores, but in her new home in a distant unknown country, it would not be like that. Then she would be married. She Evelyn. So we are talking about the. protagonist of the story which is evelyn people would treat her with respect then she would could not be treated as her mother had been even now though she had she was over 19 so she was only over 19 meaning only about 20 years old she sometimes felt herself in danger of her father's violence she knew it was that that Uh, had given her the palpitations. Palpitations is fast heartbeat. When they were growing up, he had never gone for her. Like he used to go for Harry and Ernest because she was a girl. Go for your means to beat them. So he used to beat the boys, but she would he would not beat her so much because she was a girl. But latterly he had begun to threaten her and say what he would do to her only for her dead mother's sake. Okay. so meaning that these days he started threatening her that he might hit her also beat her also and now she had nobody to protect her ernest was dead and harry who was in the church decorating business was nearly always down somewhere in the country meaning uske do bhai mein se ek bhai mar gaya tha aur ek bhai jo hai wo bahut busy rehta hai besides the invariable squabbles squabble is quarrel For money on Saturday nights had begun to weary, weary is tired, thug jana. she always gave her entire wages 7 shillings and harry always sent up what he could but the trouble was to get any money from her father he said she could she used to squander the money squander is waste that she had no head 
that he wasn't going to give her his hard earned money to throw about the streets and much more for he was usually fairly bad on saturday night in the end he would give her the money and ask her had she any intention of buying sunday's dinner then she had to rush out as quickly as she could to do her marketing holding her black leather purse tightly in her hand as she elbowed her way through the crowds and returning home late under her load of provisions she had hard work to keep the house together and to see that the two young children who had been left to her charge went to school regularly and got their meals regularly it was hard work a hard life but now that she was about to leave it she did not find it wholly undesirable life what does this mean that people usually think of something as a difficulty but once that difficulty is no longer there because you get so habituated to it that you start probably missing it or you feel maybe it's not that bad she was about to explore another life with frank frank was very kind manly open hearted she was to go away with him by the night boat to be his wife and to live with him in buenos aires where he had a home waiting for her how well she remembered the first time she had seen him he was lodging in a house on the main road where she used to visit it seemed a few weeks ago he was standing at the gate his peaked cap pushed back on his head and his hair tumbled toward her face to over a face of bronze then they had come to know each know each other he used to meet her outside the stores every evening and see her come he took her to see the bohemian girl and she felt elated elated as happy as she sat at the unaccustomed part of the theater with him he was awfully fond of music and sang a little people knew that they were comforting or fully fond is again this is called two contrasting words this is called an oxymoron quoting as dating and when he sang about the lass that loves a sailor she always fled, felt pleasantly confused he used to call her poppins out of fun uh, that was her uh, uh, nickname first of all it had been an excitement for her to have a fellow and then she had begun to like him he had tales of distant countries he had started a deck boy at a pound a month on a ship on the allen line going out to canada he told her names of the ships he had been on and the names of different services he had sailed through the straits of magellan and he told her stories of the terrible pantagonians he had fallen on his feet in buno airs he said and he had come over to the old country just for a holiday of course her father had found out about the affair and had forbidden her to have anything to say to him i know these sailor chaps one day he had quarreled with frank and after that she had to meet her lover secretly so her father did not approve and from then onwards she started meeting him secretly the evening deepened in the avenue the white of the two letters uh, in her lap grew indistinct and me wo dekh nahi payi thi usko one was to harry the other was to her father ernest had been her favorite but she liked harry too so ernest is dead and harry and ernest both were her brother are her brothers and she likes both of them her father was becoming old lately she noticed he would miss her sometimes he could be very nice not long before when she had been laid up for a day he had read her out a ghost story and made toast for her at the fire 
Another day when their mother was alive, they had all gone for a picnic to the hill of Houth. She remembered her father putting on her mother's bonnet to make the children laugh. Her time was running out but she continued to sit by the window, leaning her head against the window curtain, inhaling the odor of dusty cretonne. Down far in the avenue she could she could hear a street organ playing. She knew the air strange that it should come that very night to remind her of the promise to her mother her promise to keep the home together as long as she could she remembered the last night of her mother's illness she was again in the closed dark room at the other side of the hall and outside she heard a melancholy air of italy melancholy is sorrow or sadness the organ player had been ordered to go away and give six and given sixpence she remembered her father strutting back into the sick room saying damn the talents coming over here as she mused the pitiful vision of her mother's life laid its spell on the very quick of her being that life of common place sacrifices hello shantanu uh, which part do you want me to repeat So let's go back to this previous page and give you the gist again. Okay. So in this particular page, what is happening is, um, she talks about uh, a particular person whom she has met and she wants to get married, but her father does not allow that, and so she starts meeting him in secret. Now that she plans to run away with him, she is starting to think about her entire life. she started to think about what her mother feels what did her mother tell her to do and uh, what happened to her mother so in this particular page we are discussing the same thing that her mother basically had been sick in her last days and uh, she also talked things about her father thinking that uh, her father was not bad all the time he they did have a few good moments with him now the last part here news means to think thank you cartoon and movie masti okay sacrifices closing in on final craziness She trembled as she heard again her mother's voice saying constantly with foolish insistence Deruvan Seran Deruvan Seran possibly corrupt Gaelic for the end of pleasurous pain okay which basically means that her mother was about to die who was frank frank was the person that evelyn was in love with and her father quarrel because he did not trust frank what significance does evelyn find in the organ player's appearance on the day she had decided to leave uh, it reminded her of her mother's illness and the last day of her mother's life she stood up in the sudden impulse of terror escape she must escape Frank would save her he would give her life perhaps love too but she wanted to live why should she be unhappy she had a right to happiness frank would take her in his arms fold her in his arms and he would save her so she thought running away with him would probably save her from this uh, painful life she stood among the swaying crowd in the station at the north wall he held her hand and she knew that he was speaking to her saying something about the passage over and over again the station was full of soldiers with brown baggages through the wide doors of the sheds she caught a glimpse glimpse means a small glance at something a short 
glance. Of the black mass of the boat lying beside the quay wall, which illuminated portholes. She answered nothing. She felt her cheek pale and cold, and out of a maze of distress, she prayed to God to direct her, to show her what was her duty. The boat blew a mournful whistle to the mist. If she went tomorrow, she would be on the sea with Frank, steaming towards Buenos Aires. Their passage had been booked. Could she still draw back after all he had done for her? Her distress awoke a nausea in her body. A nausea is a vomiting sensation, and she kept moving her lips in silent, fervent prayer. So basically, what was happening is she was having a panic attack. Why? Because she was not sure whether she needs to go on that uh, trip with Frank, whether she should run away with him or not. She was not able to decide what was her duty and what was her responsibility. She could not now go back home because that would mean that she would, uh, you know, hurt Frank when he is trying to help her out. And if she doesn't go back and if she runs away, she doesn't know what's going to happen with her father and us uh, and her brother. A bell clanged upon her heart. She felt him seize her hand. Come, all the seas of the world tumbled about her ha heart. He was drawing her into them. He would uh, drown her. She gripped with both hands at the iron lane railing. Come, no, no, no. It was it was impossible. Her hands clutched the iron in frenzy. Amid the seas, she sent a cry of anguish. So, if you remember, if you can think of it, of this way. Uh, she has never been out of that house. She has never seen anything else. She's never been anywhere in her entire life. And suddenly, all of a sudden, she is now running off with a stranger, almost a stranger, because she knew him only for a few months. So uh, if she does that, uh, she is feeling a lot of panic as to what her life is going to be, because whatever she is running at, that was unknown to her. Or new to her. Eveline, Evie. He rushed beyond the barrier and called to her to follow. Uh, he was shouted at to go on, but she he still called to. Uh, uh, he was scolded by the captain of the ship that he should come back, but still he kept on shouting her name. She set her white face to him, passive, like a helpless animal. Her eyes gave him no sign of love or farewell or recognition. Why? Because she was so confused and scared. That she did not go with him. So we can say that the moral of the story is to basically talk about how human nature forms habits And these habits These habits are stronger than feelings, which means if a human being is uh, used to a particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, something, then they uh, try their best to stick to it. They try their best to not let it go, uh, irrespective of how much pain or how much unhappiness it is causing to them. 
name the two characters in the story whom eveline liked and loved and the two she did not what were the reasons for her feelings towards them so the two characters that she liked were ernest and frank we can assume that she did not like harry and her father the reason is probably they were uh, you know affectionate towards eveline whereas these people were not affectionate towards her describe the conflict of emotions uh, so conflict of emotions here was that she was happy because she would finally escape from a miserable life that she was so unhappy with but at the same time she was so habituated to her life that she felt scared to let it go why do you think eveline let go of the opportunity because she was habituated to that pain and misery and the moment she realized she would get out of it she didn't feel that it was that bad and that's why she decided to stay with it what are the signs of eveline's indecision that we see as the hour of the departure with frank neared so the indecision is again about whether she has to run away with him or stay here a bell clanged upon her heart meaning she suddenly felt extremely uh, uh, you know scared all the seas of the world tumbled upon her heart which means everything came down on her suddenly her hands clutched the iron in frenzy meaning she was so uh, scared that she caught hold of the iron you know bar so hard that she could not move from there she set a white face to him passive like a helpless animal meaning as if to show that i'm sorry i have uh, i cannot come with you that's what it basically means so this was the story of uh, eveline i hope you all understood the lesson and also enjoyed the story i hope to see you all again in the next class thank you and don't forget to use my code riti to avail your 10% discount in subscription thank you